we've been going through First Thessalonians uh, teaching and breaking it down. We've been doing that for a while. <clears throat> I, uh, you know, sometimes you you really don't know what you got till you get it written down. You know what? Uh, in Scripture, we see something, especially in the Old Testament, uh, something that can be called spiritual markers. And all that is is just a particular place in life where God did something very, very memorable uh, in, your, in your walk with him. And you memorialize it in your memory. Uh, or perhaps you even got it written down somewhere or something. And so I, I want us to, I really want to challenge you to do what we're going to do tonight. You don't have to do it tonight. I'm going to do it as an example and when I say example, uh, it's like the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6. He didn't give us that prayer to repeat it. He gave us that so, what, so we would know what the elements of a prayer should be, what a prayer should contain. And so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my spiritual markers tonight. Uh, and I'm not doing that uh, just to show you what God's done in my life. I'm doing it as an example. Uh, but I want you to... I want you to really do this. I want you to go home and uh, take some time, put some thought into this. Because like I said, you really don't know what you got. And sometimes we don't know where we've been uh, or what the Lord's done for us and through us and to us until we take a minute and write it down. And so I want to give you some examples of this. <clears throat> in uh, Starting in Genesis 12 and this is called the Abrahamic Covenant. Uh, this is where God began to make the nation of Israel. And an old boy named Abraham does some things. First of all, look at Genesis 12, 7. If you're in Genesis 12, say amen. Look at verse 7. And we're not going to explain all this because they eat up all our time, but we're just going to see the action of these guys. Verse 7 says, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to your descendants, I will give this land. So he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Look at verse 8. Then he proceeded from there to the mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord. Now look at chapter 13, verse 18. Yeah, verse 18 in chapter 13. The Bible says, Then Abraham moved his tent and came and dwelt by the oaks of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and there he built an altar to the Lord. Now, we didn't take time to investigate why he built these altars. We just looked at the actions. He built altars. Go to uh, chapter 35 in Genesis. When you get to chapter 35, look for verse 14. You there? Say Amen. Verse 14 says, Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he had spoken with him. God had spoken with him. A pillar of stone, and he poured out a drink offering on it and also poured oil on it. Now keep turning uh, and look at Joshua chapter 4. You know, you guys that look at the Bible on your phone, you're really cheating by doing that. Uh, you there? Verse 1. You there? Say Amen. Now, when all the nations had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourself twelve men from the people, one from each tribe, and commanding and commanded them, saying, Take up for yourself twelve stones from out from here, out of the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet are standing firm, and carry them over with you, and lay them down in the lodging place where you will lodge tonight. Uh, go down to verse 9. I'm sorry, uh, verse 8. Thus the sons of Israel did as Joshua commanded and took up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, just as the Lord spoke to Joshua according to the number of the tribes of sons of Israel, and they carried them over with them to the lodging place and put them down there. Look at verse 9. Then Joshua set up 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan at the place where the feet of the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing, and they are there to this day. So it's two different 
sets of stones it was set up. Keep turning and find 1 Samuel. This is the last scripture we're going to look at. 1 Samuel chapter 7. Keep turning to your right. And look at verse 12 when you get there. Yes, ma'am. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. The Bible says, Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mitzvah and Shen, and named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So in all of these instances, we see men of God creating markers, whether it be an altar or whether it be a stone or a pile of stone. These uh, was done when God did something in their life, and they marked that place, and so we call it spiritual markers, something that God has done in our life. Uh, when we went to the evaluation for uh, Michael and Chastity at uh, the church planning weekend, uh, they had them draw in front of the whole room uh, a circle like this, big circle. And around this circle, they wrote their spiritual markers. And this, this is really powerful if you'll do it in your life. So I'm going to put some spiritual markers of my life. Matter of fact, I'm going to go from when I got saved. And by the way, that's where it all starts. Now, you can back up even further. And I could. I could back up to where God was dealing with me and I was running from him and all of that. I'm just not going to do that. It just takes too long for, for us to do it in a short span of time. But uh, where I started at or where the Lord started with me at was at salvation. Just like where you started. Four oh seven West Main Street, Hughes, Arkansas. Anybody ever been to Hughes? That's where it started. Now moving on from there, in just a little while, another spiritual marker in my life. I got baptized at Central Baptist Church, not in Jonesboro, but in Hughes, Arkansas. Shortly after that, I moved from that church to another church. Crossroads Baptist Church. So, after the Lord saved me, by the way, it was a big event. For the Lord to save me, it was a big event. And then, uh, and I didn't get saved in a church. I got saved in a house, my house, in a spare bedroom. But I went to a church after I got saved, and I got baptized. And after I was at that church a little while, the Lord moved me uh, to this church. And at, Cro at Crossroads, I became a Sunday school teacher. Anybody ever done that? And from the Sunday school teacher position, God began to work in my life. Somebody say something. This thing is echoing. Uh, God began to work in my life to begin Christian Wrangler camp. That was a big deal in my life. So I was saved at 407 West Main Street and went to Central Baptist Church in Hughes, Arkansas, and I got baptized. And from there, the Lord moved us to Crossroads Baptist Church. I'd never really done anything for the Lord other than come to church and sit down and listen to preaching and sing when the singing was on. But here, God introduced me into a, a, a teaching position as a Sunday school teacher. And then the Lord called me to start the Wrangler Camp, which we did. Uh, and after the Christian Wrangler Camp, uh, got up and going. The Lord uh, called me to be a um, student leader.
at crossroads. And from there, being a student leader, uh, make sure I don't miss nothing here. Yeah. The Lord called me to be student pastor. There is a difference. Crossroads. And from the student pastor, God called me to be the associate slash student pastor. And I became bivocational, which means I still worked part-time at a job, but I went into the ministry. Uh, so I worked for the church, and I worked at uh, UPS Freight. And from the associate pastor position, uh, God me, moved me into the senior pastor position. Still by vocational. And from the senior pastor position, God called me to be a church planner. Still by vocational. And from this church planning calling, we planted what? Three trees. Three trees. Cowboy church. And from this church planner by vocational position that we planted the church, since then God has moved in my life to be a uh, The full time pastor. So I'm full time in ministry now. Now, all of this, this was about uh, from, from salvation to baptism, about two months probably. I, I'm not exactly sure that. Uh, from Central to Crossroads, three years. Uh, from Crossroads to, uh, let me get this right. Yeah, probably another three years. And then from, yeah, from student pastor to associate pastor, that was five year span. And then another five years as senior. And then church planting, seven years bivocational. And then five years to where we are now. And that all that adds up to about a little over 25 years. Now, why is that important? Because all of this is what God has done in my life. These are spiritual markers. Probably don't mean that much to you. It's big to me. See, because I, I still remember when, when the pastor's wife come to me at Crossroads Baptist Church and said, Tracy, I need you to teach a class. You don't need me to teach no class. Not me. I ain't never taught no class. I don't know nothing about the Bible. I don't know enough about the Bible. But she was a pers persuasive woman. And so I taught the class. And then we found our, our this was burning a hole in me, Christian Wrangler Camp. Just literally consumed my thoughts, consumed my energy for a couple of years before we ever did it. I mean, this, this is when we did it, but this started way back. And so then that launched. And then we found, at the same time, we found ourselves at Crossroads having a bunch of students with no leader. And two of those students was named Blakely and Ashley, which was my students. Therefore, Lois and I became student leaders. And then my pastor said they need a pastor. So we became, I became the student pastor. Then he said, what's the possibilities of you going part-time at your work? and come in on staff here at uh, 
Crossroads Baptist Church. I said, well, you don't, you don't go, you don't go back at a trucking company. You only go, you either move up or you move out, out the door. But God made a way. And I was the first person in overnight transportation history. I've been there 15 years that God opened up a door and allowed me to go part time back to part-time status. And so I went into the ministry here. And then uh, my pastor come to me after about five years and said, I'm retiring. And I said, oh, no. And uh, he didn't say, you need to be the senior pastor. But they did. The congregation asked me, would I be the senior pastor? I said, I will be the senior interim pastor because I knew this is not where God wanted me to stay, even though it was a big chunk of my life. So I was a senior pastor in an interim position for five years. And then God called to do this. And we did this, and God blessed it, and here y'all are. Uh, and God's made a way uh, for me to be the full-time senior pastor here for the last five years. Can, can you do this in your life? Have you ever done this in your life? This is valuable in your life. To see where the Lord has started with you. Because this is where it all starts. The day before this happened was the worst day of my life, probably. Seriously. One of the worst. I had a bunch of, man, I had a bunch of bad days back then. It was bad. It was ugly and horrible. But then this, this evening that I got saved was the most incredible day of my life. It really was. And God began to work. Now, what's after this? I don't know. The next spiritual marker may be full-time rancher. Yeah, you guys would like for me to go to Africa, wouldn't you? Won't we all load up? No, I'm just carrying on there. I don't know what God will do next. I may die right here in the pulpit. Or I may go plant another church. Or I don't know. That's right, God's will. Every believer should have spiritual markers in their life, just like Abraham did, just like Joshua did. Spiritual markers serve as barometers. For how we do it. Remember, Paul said what? Evaluate yourself to see if you are of the faith. And these spiritual markers, you know, if, if your spiritual markers are like this, you see that? Got saved, been going to church ever since. There ought to be something in there, shouldn't it? That's why this is so important. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying anybody's that way. I'm just saying, if this is. Now, I do have a feeling that many people, this is their spiritual mark. They got saved. But this is important in your life to remember. Me and old Mark knows the song. We ought to sing that old song one of these days. When I look back down the road. Who, who, who wrote that, Lanny Wolf? Merle Ewing. Wonderful old Pentecostal song. We, I grew up, Mark was already grown a long time as I was growing. But anyway, uh, we need to be able to look back down the road and see where the Lord's brought me from. So the Lord, hear me now, the Lord saved an old boy. And then the Lord has been doing all this. Well, what's Tracy been doing? Getting in his way. Basically, getting in his way. You know, what, what did I start off by saying? You're not comparing it to me. I, I, I don't, when I, when I pray, I don't recite Matthew 6, 9, 1 through 10. That's the Lord's Prayer. But I do use those elements. I'm talking to my Father. Ma'am? Well? You were too. You were too. Well, you're not supposed to then. If you can't, you're not supposed to. 
that ain't what this is about doing what I'm doing. You're, you're, let me tell you, some folks' spiritual, let's just call it a spiritual wheel. <laughs> it may be full of ups and downs. The downs. See, I told you if we had enough time, I could back way up from here, like way around here, and I could tell you about me laying in, in bed at night with tears running down my eyes because God's the weight of God's conviction was crushing me and my wife laying next to me. And the conviction and the weight was, you need to be leading your family to my house. But I couldn't let go of the world to do that. So I could have backed up to that. That's a spiritual marker. Probably I should have, thinking, thinking about it now. Uh, and from that, those years between being crushed to here, was bad times. I'm wrong all on myself. Turned out to be good times, but pain, painful times led to this. And the Lord did all this. No, your, your spiritual markers don't have to look like mine. don't have to look nothing like mine. But you should have some spiritual markers in your life. Does that make any sense? I mean, these, these things should be in place. And there's going to be things that spiritual markers in your life that I don't have as spiritual markers in my life. You know, I don't, I don't want to put words in Ricky's mouth, but I'm fixing to. I think a spiritual marker for, for Ricky Cartilla will be D groups. This is a big deal, ain't it, Rick? What God's doing in your barn is a big deal. Yeah, you don't have to plant churches to have a spiritual marker. It could be ministering to homeless folks. That's kingdom work. Let me tell you who Jesus Christ would be ministering to. That's right. Where would Jesus be? Skid Row. That's where Jesus would be. I had a, I had a conversation with a very influential person today in the addiction ministry world. And he gets lots and lots of uh, churches calling him big churches, churches with lots and lots of money that will call him and want to invest and do things and have grand ideas. And he told me, he said, but you know, man, them folks can't handle my guys coming to their church. They ain't ready for the way them guys look. I said, oh, I know. I know. But that's who Jesus would minister to, right? Not to get off on a rabbit trail, but spiritual markers, guys, don't, don't underestimate the power in this. Because, you know, hey, look, you don't know what's in your check account really till you balance that dude, right? You know, one of the things that amazed me once I put it down and started paying attention, this is going to sound funny to you, but you guys will get this. You girls won't. But one of the things that amazed me, how many tires was on my property? Your ladies are like, what? Tires. You never realize how many tires you got until you start counting them. Go home and get, Ricky, count how many tires you own. It'll blow your mind. You probably can't. Mike, count how many tires are on your place. Just think about it. You'll be amazed how many tires. If you've got a few trailers and a few trucks, and it's just amazing. What's my point? My point is, until you do the math and put it on paper, you just don't really realize. Sound like Greg McDougall. Don't do the math. <laughs> until you write down your spiritual markers. And they can be highs and they can be lows, but they're still spiritual markers. Because we don't get to the high places till we pass through the low places usually. It's just the way it is. The spiritual markers are part of your life. And I challenge you as a church, this will make our church better. If you will take time this week, get alone, ask the Holy Spirit to just bring to remembrance what he's done in your life and where he's, it all starts right here. Everyone's spiritual markers can start right here. You can back up 
to where you got here. I definitely could have. I wish I, I would have now, but too late now. But that's where it really starts with salvation. You don't serve the Lord apart from salvation. God doesn't do things in your life apart from That's where it all starts. And there can be some disasters along the way. That's okay, man. That is perfectly fine. Uh, but do your spiritual markers. Because that really shows you where you're at in your journey with Jesus. Amen. Yes, Rick. You, you just actually reminded me of another spiritual marker. When me and Lois finally got... Came to be givers. We was too poor to give. We thought we were. And, and I told Lois, went home, said, we got to start tithing. What do you mean? Well, we started, got, got, got to start giving to the church. Well, you put money in the plate. Yeah, but that ain't really giving. Not, not like we should be. It needs to be a normal part of who we are. We can't do that. Got to. So later on, I said, we tithing yet? Obviously, you know, Lois pays the bills. Uh, nope, not yet. Come on now, we got to do this. And I kept going back. And then finally, I went back one time. I said, we tithing yet? Yeah, we are. Been tithing for a little while. How are we doing that? I don't know what we're doing it. That's a spiritual marker. I should have put that in here somewhere. Just didn't think of it, Rick. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. Tonight could be a spiritual marker. Because tonight, God could speak to you about the lack thereof. Or, who knows, maybe someone will come to Christ in here tonight. Tonight could be a spiritual marker. Where you're motivated. You become motivated. Uh, man, look. My job as a pastor is also to be a coach. Come on, you can do this. Not a cheerleader, but a coach. Come on, you can do this, Mike. Amen. Amen. So don't look up here and, and say, well, I, 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 God ain't called me to do all that. God's called you to do some stuff, though. Lots of big stuff. Lots of big stuff. Those are spiritual markers. Write them down. Look at them. Rejoice over them. See, when, when I watched Michael and Chastity do that, Michael got saved at a uh, hell house. You know what a hell house is? Yeah, they, they do a play, and I don't think it might be called hell house. I don't know what it's called. But anyway, it's, it's a depiction of what hell will be like. Now, check this out. This is where Michael started, got saved at Hell House. You ready for this? At Nettleton Baptist Church, Jonesboro. He's planting a church behind Nettleton Baptist Church. God just does stuff like that every now and then to go. <laughs> I'm God. You know, I could do it, did you, Joey? I'm hurting already, buddy. I'm hurting right now. Yeah. But that's just the God we serve. You see, here's the thing, guys, and we're, we're done. We don't take inventory. We just go. We just go. We just go. We need to take inventory every now and then. Because inventory will tell you what you ain't got, what you do got, what you need. Right. And that's what spiritual markers are for, Joey. Write it down. See what happens. Write it down. Yeah, and you know, you may need to sit down with your wife and do it. Lois would probably add some stuff in here that I've missed. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But I encourage you to do one however you do it. Just do one. Just do it. And uh, see what it does in your life. Amen or not? Amen. Ain't it been fun tonight? 
Yeah. All right. Good to see everybody on Wednesday night. Uh, appreciate uh, Mike's sincere uh, words about Iron Man. I tell you, man, it's life changing. Uh, it is. I mean, when Wayne first started coming, I mean, he was uh, just poor and raggedy. Now he's wearing silk shirts and slip on shoes. Hey, let, the beanie's off limits. I'm telling you, it's, it's Wayne. You can, brother. This is for homeless people, guys. That's good. Wayne, I appreciate you letting me pick on you. I want to say it publicly. Boy, I love you. Proud of you, man. Praise the Lord for you. I mean that. Oh, he's, yeah, he's a movie star. Yeah, he's a movie star. Yeah, yeah. Only the Lord can do that, can he, Wayne? Amen. I tell you what, let's stand. Wayne, won't you dismiss us? Well, hello, everybody. My name is Tracy Wilson. Thank you so much for being with us uh, via Facebook or YouTube or however you're watching us, whether it be a Wednesday night round pen or a Sunday morning uh, service here at the Cowboy Church. Just wanted to say hello and give you a personal invite to come and be with us here at the Cowboy Church. Uh, there's three options for you. Sunday mornings, we have a 9 a.m. service, uh, and then a second service at 10.30 a.m. And then on Wednesday nights, uh, we do what we call a round pin Bible study, which is just getting into the heart of God's Word and studying it for all it's worth. We would love to meet with you uh, here in person at the Cowboy Church. We're so thankful for uh, technology. We've gotten uh, comments on our uh, sermons and Bible studies uh, all the way from Africa. And so we're so thankful. But uh, we do want to invite you here with us uh, to be uh, in person, in-house at the Cowboy Church. You know, the Bible says this about salvation. The Bible says clearly in Ephesians 2.8 that salvation is by grace through faith not of works, so no man can boast. Our prayer is that through these messages and through these Bible studies, uh, that the Word of God would uh, find its place in your heart. The promise is that God's Word will not return void. So we want to make ourselves available to you uh, for anything that we can do to help you. If you have questions about this Jesus that we preach about, this Jesus that we serve, this Jesus that we know as our Savior and that the Bible declares as the only Savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you would have a question about that, if we could help you with that, or if God deals with your heart through one of our sermons or Bible studies and you've responded to that and you've put your hope and trust and you've committed to follow Jesus Christ, we would love to celebrate with you about that. We'd love to talk with you about that help you in any way that we can. If you're watching, then obviously you have Facebook or uh, the availability of YouTube. Uh, if we can do anything, I would love for you to personally message me on Facebook. And I would love to correspond with you about this. God is able, and He is able to meet all of our needs. He has extended His grace to us uh, through the offer of forgiveness of our sins and eternal life. I hope that you have taken advantage of that. I hope that you belong to Christ. And please take advantage of Three Trees Cowboy Church. Being here in person or just allowing us to message with you and help you in any way we can. Until then, until we see you in person or we see that message, God bless you and thank you for being with us.